We're starting with our prepped tumbler. So I prepped it by sanding it down. You can see those sanding marks on there. This is a 20 ounce modern tumbler from Craft Haven. So we are going to start by doing our little map out of our B split design. To do that, I'm gonna take a sheet of plain, just regular computer paper, and I'm gonna first fold it into a square. So to fold it into a square, I'm just gonna take, take it and fold it diagonally. Okay, so I've got it folded here. I'm gonna cut this edge off and we'll be left with a square, but that square is gonna be too large for our tumbler, so then we're gonna cut it down. Once we have our square cut, we're going to cut it again in half here on this line and we'll be left with our triangle shape and then we'll cut it down to fit the size of our tumbler. Okay, now from here, we can decide where we want our V-split to go. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna line that up. Now this is not gonna lay flat, remember, because it's a curved cup. So we're just gonna wrap this around here. And as long as this triangle shape kind of stays intact a little bit, that's just what we need. This is just a template. So I'm gonna wrap these around here and I would like them to come at a point on the tumbler too, so we're safe there. So I'm just gonna tape that right there, kind of curve it over just like that. And you can see we've got a little bit of a guideline for our tape application. I'm gonna tape this painter's tape. I think this is three quarters of an inch wide if I'm not mistaken. I'm gonna place this down using those lines or the edge of the triangle as my guide for placing my tape down. Okay, so now that we've got our tape down, what we need to make sure of is that this point and this point are on opposite ends of the tumbler. So I'm gonna remove our piece of paper because we don't really need it anymore. Oh, we're gonna take this and we need to see if this and this are lined up. And to me, they look like they are, but we're gonna just double check and make sure. Use this. You can use whatever you have is fine. So I'm gonna take this here and I'm gonna keep it straight to my eye. And then I'm just gonna bring it around the bottom and line it up with that bottom, just to make sure that they're on opposite sides of the cup and they appear to be from my view. So now we're just gonna make sure that this inside tape is smooth and that our inside triangle is all clean and like this is flat. We're not worried about the bottom of the cup or anything at this point right now. We're just focused on this top triangle section. So we're gonna base paint this now after we mask all of this off and do our glittering first. All right, so our cup is base painted. I did not do a very good job base painting, but that's okay. We're gonna use a lot of glitter and cover it right up. So I did a little bit of like a, kind of like a periwinkle color faded into a white. And the colors we're going to use are main colors for our chunkies. I've got Lagoon, Mojito, and Parabatai. And we're gonna fade those up. And of course we'll blend with the fine cuts and the extra fine cuts. So I'm gonna start with my epoxy here. I'm gonna put a very thin, whoops, very thin layer of epoxy on this V split section. Okay, I'm gonna let my cup sit for just about a minute or so. All right, so as always, we're going to start with our darkest, chunkiest cut first, which is Lagoon. And I'm gonna go really, really light with this to start. And I'm really just focusing it down on that bottom point. So that's as heavy as we're gonna go. I'm gonna very lightly fade it upwards to start the blending process. 
Our next chunky is mojito, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go pretty light right in the middle of this section. I'm holding my shaker really high, as you can see. I'm gonna also kind of fade it downwards into Lagoon, and then very, very lightly up into what will be the white section. For our white section, we're using Parabatai, and I'm gonna go really, really heavy along this top rim, like super full coverage pretty much on here. You can see that difference. And then I'm just gonna lightly, again, fade downwards into where Mojito is laying. There's what the cup looks like with the white added. And now we're gonna go back in and do our fine cuts next. The fine cut teal we're using is aquamarine. And again, this is the darkest color, so I'm gonna go really light, just focusing it at the very tip of that triangle and then lightly fading it down into the mint section. The next color is 10, 12, 13, and I'm gonna go a little bit heavier handed here with this color. This is our second lightest. Um, so I'm gonna go a little bit more heavy on this, just still concentrating towards the middle of the V, and then fading downward into our dark teal section, and then very lightly up into the white. Now we go really light with our colors and kind of build the coverage up slowly because we want to establish a good color with the lighter colors before we go in and really try to like blend super hard with these dark colors. Because if we've got a good base of light down, then when we go in and we really just like go hard with this extra fine cut, it's only going to stick to the places that are open. And if we have a really good coverage with the light colors, if we've got a really good coat with that, then it won't look like big blobs of like contamination. It'll just look blended. So we like to go slow, really build up the fade as we go with the smaller cuts. And then once we get to the extra fine cuts, we can really go pretty heavy handed because we've got such a good base of all the other colors down. I hope that makes sense. Um, but that's why I use so many colors and so many cuts because I really think that it builds up a really, really, really nice fade. Before we add our fine white, I'm gonna tap off the excess. <laughs> And then I'm gonna go in with the white. We're gonna use Nookie today. And again, I'm gonna go really heavy on that top rim and then lightly just fade down into the teal and mint sections. Now, because the white is our lightest color, we can go more heavy handed with that than we did with anything else. It's also going to blend really nicely with those colors. Um, sparkly whites and like iridescent kind of whites always blend really well. They're a really good kind of like carrier color or blender color, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, now we've got our chunkies and our fine cuts on so we can go in and really build up a nice blend with our extra fines. So for that extra fine teal, we're using a little mermaid and I'm gonna go heavy on the bottom, bottom part and then a little bit heavier as I blend upwards. Just shaking down. You can see the steep angle I'm holding my cup. The steeper the angle, the farther your glitter will fall. If you hold your cup like this and you glitter, it's not gonna move anywhere. So the steeper your angle, the more your glitter will navigate up your cup. So there's that extra fine added in. Now I'll do the same thing with the two lighter colors. We're using 45 Bistro for the light mint color. And I'm gonna go really heavy down into the dark teal section because that's already very well covered. So I'm gonna go down there and then kind of lighten up just a little bit. We can still go kind of heavy handed here into the white section to really blend that out. Now when I'm laying this down, I'm aiming like maybe an inch away from the rim with this middle color. 
because the higher you take that color up, the more blended it's gonna look. So don't be afraid to like bring it up this far. There's that extra fine added. And then finally we'll go in with special edition flurries, which is our extra fine white glitter. With this one, this is our last color, our finest cut, our lightest color. So we're gonna go in just crazy here. We're gonna just let it go all over, all the way down even into that dark teal section. That's really just gonna help build the blend, kind of fade everything together and give us a really nice finish. All right, so there's what our final blend looks like. I'm gonna go through and remove all of this tape and then I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry for about four to six hours. Our first glittered section is all dry now, so we're going to move into the second glittered section. I am going to tape off that middle striped area. We're going to deal with that at the very end. I'm using half inch painter's tape that I got on Amazon in a big pack. I'll have that linked down below in the description box, but I'm basically just going to follow those glitter lines to make sure that we don't get any paint or glitter or anything in that area. And then I'm going to base paint that bottom triangle or V section with just some regular matte white acrylic paint and then we'll let that dry about 30 minutes and then we'll go in with our next layer of paint. All right, so we've got our one ombre side done. We've got our white base paint on this side and now we're going to go in with our next ombre side. So we're going to do the opposite direction that we did with the first ombre. So we went from light to dark here. Now we're going to go from light to dark up instead of down. So I'm going to base paint with our pinks. We're just going to use acrylic paints because um, I don't want to tape all this off and, have, and spray paint it. So we're just going to use acrylic paint. So I've got white, Lisa pink, and fuchsia. These are all the Delta Ceramco brand my favorite acrylic paint. I've got a brush for each color and a little paint palette here. We're just gonna try to do the best blending we can with our paints. As always, I'm putting way too much paint into my palette here, more than I'm gonna need, I'm sure. So there's our palette. And we're gonna start, we're gonna do the dark pink up here. So I'm gonna take one of my brushes and I'm just gonna go in and base paint it on here. Now the white base is going to give us a lot more um, pigment with our colors. They're gonna pop off a little bit more. We're not gonna have to do two coats of this. We're just gonna go right on the white. So there's that pink. And I'm gonna bring this down kind of far. We didn't go too far with the dark here. So I don't wanna go too, too far down with the hot pink. I want them to kind of match a little bit. So we're just gonna go about there. And then our middle section is going to be the largest, just kind of how it is here. So I'm going to blend that down almost to the very bottom of the cup. I guess I'm not really blending. They're not super blended. <laughs> we'll get there. And I'm just being really careful. I don't want to get any paint on my glitter side, obviously. So just be careful as you're painting. Right about there. Go back in with this side and start to kind of blend the paint a little bit. Again, it's not a big deal if these aren't blended perfectly. It'll turn out fine because of the glitters we're going to use. So don't worry about like a perfect blend. You just don't want a super harsh line there. And if you would rather spray paint, go for it. You totally can. Just be sure to mask off your... Um, glitter section before you do that. You don't want to get any spray paint on your glitter because you won't be able to clean it up. <laughs> this is our blend. That's looking a little better. And now we're going to go in with our last color, which is our white. So we're just going to cover the white we've already got. We're going to go right over the seam and everything of the bottom of the cup. We're just going to make everything solid white, including the very, very bottom. Probably should have used the big brush for this side, but that's okay. <laughs> And 
Well, again, going in with the big brush and just kind of blending that harsh line out. Doesn't need to be perfect. Like I said, just needs to be kind of blended and not a super harsh line. Just like that, totally fine. So we've got the bottom covered, we've got this edge covered all the way around. I'm gonna let this dry for about maybe 45 minutes. I want it to be totally dry before I go in and add my epoxy so that we can apply the glitter. All right, I've got some epoxy on this side of our tumbler, so we're gonna do our glitter ombre on this side now. We're gonna use the same whites that we used for this section on the top of the cup. For our mid-tone pinks, we're gonna use Barbie and Love You Bye. And then we're gonna use Cool Mom and Wednesdays for the darker pink section. So I'm gonna start with Cool Mom because that's our darkest. And now when we're glittering, I'm going to be very careful not to get the colors in this side. So I'm gonna glitter kind of hesitantly, I guess is the word, kind of softly glittering. So there's our Cool Mom. You can see I faded it down into that mid pink section. Pretty light coverage. And I'm going to go in with Barbie next. Still going pretty light, not super duper light, but just light enough that we can fill in. So there's Barbie. Finally, we're going to take Parabatai on this bottom section. And you can see I'm fading it all the way up. Now that the chunky cuts are down, we can go in with the fine cuts and really build that blend just the same way we did with the first side. So for our fine cut dark, we're gonna take Wednesdays. And again, I'm gonna be kind of ginger here in my application because I don't wanna get any fine cut dark colors where they don't belong. I mean, that glitter is pretty dry now on the other side. So if we do, we should be able to just brush it off. It shouldn't be a big deal, but just in case. We're going to use Love You Bye for the mid-tone pink fine. And I'm putting this up where Wednesdays and Cool Mom are, as well as down into Pair of a Tie. And finally, we're gonna use Nookie for the white. And I'm gonna go kind of crazy with Nookie. I'm just gonna cover as much as I can with it. So the full bottom. And then I'm gonna go pretty heavy coverage down at the super bottom rim. Super bottom rim. And then I'm going to fade it upwards. Again, not being light-handed here in my coverage at all. Nookie is going to blend with any of the colors we have down, so I'm not worried about it going literally all over the cup. So there's what we've got for our blend. And now I'm going to remove this tape right away because I don't want the epoxy to cure on there and make it more difficult to pull up later. So I'm just going to take the tape off. So there we go with our little ombre. Cool. So I let that epoxy layer dry for about three hours and then I went in with two coats of epoxy over my tumbler. I did spray seal my glitter with a coat of clear gloss spray from Rust-Oleum and then I went in with my epoxy, did some very light sanding. When I was doing my sanding, I really just wanted to make sure that that middle V section was super smooth because as you can see, we're going to add some pattern vinyl striping here. This is my Dalmatian Dots pattern from the Peachy Palette. So I cut these at 11 and a half inches long by 0.5 inches wide, the same size as the painter's tape that we use to mark off this section. And I'm just going to very carefully place these right in that blank spot on our tumbler. Thank you. 
Once I've got those applied, I'm going to go in with some silver striping right away. I'm going to use these thin stripes that were in between the thick stripes that I cut. I'm trying to use as much of my vinyl as I can without wasting any. So I'm going to use these little stripes just to finish off this middle section. And when I'm placing these, I'm placing them on the outside edge of the vinyl. So we don't have any overlap or anything. I'm really just butting up the edges and making sure that I keep everything really smooth and straight. And where the two pieces of vinyl overlap or where they cross, I'm just going to cut off the excess at the end so that they can form a point and have a really nice finish. I sealed that vinyl with a coat of polycrylic and then I added a coat of epoxy to my tumbler to seal that vinyl in officially. And now I'm going to go in and do all of my sanding on the top rim so that we can add our decal. Now when I'm doing my sanding here, I am not sanding anywhere except for the top like eighth of an inch of my cup. The decal we're going to use is a clear decal, so I want to make sure that the background for that decal is smooth and shiny. So I just sanded down the top rim of my cup to expose that super thin line of stainless steel, and now we can go in and apply our clear decal on our shiny smooth surface. This is another decal from my peachy palette. It says you are more successful when you are having fun, and I really firmly believe that. So we are going to place this on the top, the portion of the cup where the teal is, so that we can kind of bring that pink to this side of the cup and really tie everything together. Now, this is a curved tumbler, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to place the decal on this curved surface. So I'm going to show you how you can get these to lay flat and look really nice. So I'm going to start off by using the hinge method, cutting away a little bit of the backing, and then I'm going to smooth the decal on as much as I can. And when it starts to kind of want to wrinkle, I'm going to go in with my craft knife and you can see here I'm just cutting each line of the decal into its own little separate piece so that I can move and apply that on its own. And that's going to prevent all of those wrinkles and bubbles and all of that stuff that you get sometimes when you try to apply big decals to curved surfaces. So I'm just gonna cut it into little pieces and then apply line by line so that everything looks really smooth and seamless. And once we get this under epoxy, all of that clear extra space is going to completely disappear and nobody's gonna know that you cut this into pieces and applied it to your cup that way. So once the decal was all applied, I went in with my final two coats of epoxy. So here is the final tumbler design. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I definitely am going to have to ombre those pinks together again on another cup. I can't stop staring at those colors together. I really, really love them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, you know what to do. Give it a big thumbs up down below. Don't forget to let me know what you think down below in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Okay. Love you. Bye.